Hey everyone, it's Lucy here. I know I haven't posted for a while, but it's intern and grad recruitment season now, so I thought I'd make a video to show you the intern resume that got me into Amazon Web Services. So for those who are new to this channel, I was an intern at Amazon for around eight months, and now I'm a graduate working full-time. So the reason I decided to make this video is because some of my friends have been asking for resume tips on how they can improve their own resume. I'm going to be showing you my resume, I'm going to be critiquing it, telling you what went well, what could be improved on. Remember to give this video a like and subscribe to this channel to stay updated with tech, career and student advice. And yeah, let's just get right into it. Alright, so this is the resume that I submitted in March of 2020. And I'm just going to be going through section by section what I put on this page. So just remember, first of all, to keep your resume to one page. That way it makes it a lot easier for the recruiter or anyone who's screening your resume to skim through it and see what the key points are. All right, so starting off with the first section, you can see that I have my full name and key contact details. So email, mobile and LinkedIn. It's pretty standardized and it's what I've seen across different resume templates so I won't talk too much about this but it's just a good way for the recruiter to know how to contact you if they're interested in progressing you to the next round. So the second part that I have is the education section and in this I included both my uni and my high school which I'm not too sure why. Um, I would recommend just keeping your university on the education section. I have UNSW Bachelor of Computer Science and this was my old degree before I transferred to a Bachelor of Information Systems instead. I would recommend at the bottom if you have anything that you know really stands out as a uni student. So for me it was the Co-op Scholarship recipient. If you have anything that you know for example you did really well in a course, came top 10 or you went on exchange, something like that, I would really recommend including that as a key highlight under your university experiences. Alright, so moving on to the work experience section, you can see that I followed a certain structure when writing down each of my experiences. I started off with the role, followed by the company, the location, and then I had a few sentences describing what I was able to achieve. So having a structure like this really helps you concisely showcase the value you can bring to a company. And one thing I wanted to mention is that you don't necessarily have to put in every single experience you've had since you started working. And to be honest, it's not really recommended because you really want to be tailoring your resume to the specific job that you're applying for and looking at the type of skills that they prefer in candidates. And I know for some of you, you might be applying for your first ever internship. So your previous experiences might not have been in a corporate setting. You might have been a sales assistant, um, worked in retail or did some high school tutoring. But really think about the transferable skills that you can bring from those roles into your future role. And the best way to showcase that would be through dot points under your job title. I would recommend starting off each dot point with a verb. So what did you do? Did you teach? Did you support? Did you help implement? Did you lead? Really have a think about what you ended up doing in the role. The second thing I wanted to mention is to try and quantify your impact. Sometimes it's really tempting to just say, I taught some students JavaScript, but it's really important to not only quantify how many students you taught. So for, in my case, it was classes of up to 30 students but also what sort of impact that created. So in my example, it was, I received an average 4.9 rating from over 50 students. So really reflect on your past experiences and try and dig up any numbers that you have to really showcase the impact that you bring. The next section on my resume is university experiences. And I will structure this the same way as I structure my work experiences because there's the role, the company or the project that you're part of and there's also the dot points stating what you did and the impact that you had. So pretty much similar. The only sort of difference is that this is the impact and experience that you gained throughout your time in university. And with that being said, one thing I wanted to emphasize is that you should only be putting experiences that you feel comfortable and passionate talking about during an interview. So you should be really familiar and confident with talking about each of the dot points with your experiences and the experience itself. So in my case, I had to think about which experiences really brought upon the biggest impact for me personally, and also in terms of the skills I was able to build during my time at university. One thing I just realized is that I don't have dates on any of the uni experiences on the right. So I would recommend keeping it consistent, making sure that every experience on your resume has a certain date attached to it, just to keep it consistent for formatting. So the uni experience that I was really passionate about is UNSW Digital Society and co-founding that with a bunch of friends. So that definitely went on to the top of my uni experience list. 
That way it not only stands out on the resume but also going into the interview phase. When interviewers look at your resume, they're more likely to point out that experience and ask you to elaborate on it. So a lot of the time the interviewer would already have your resume on hand when they interview you so that they can ask you questions related to experience. So yeah, I guess that's sort of a benefit when it comes to having resumes that are one page long. It's really condensed and you can sort of pick and choose experiences that you feel passionate talking about and you feel like will bring the most value. Okay, so the last two sections that I have on my resume are competitions and skills and knowledge areas. And I would argue that these two are pretty much optional. If you have space on your resume, you could put that in. And if you don't, I would say just leave it out. In my case, I decided to put competitions in because I thought it was really a key part in my uni experience. It really helped me develop the confidence in solving problems and also public speaking. So that's something I put in as a highlight and also because I just had a bit of space at the end. In terms of skills and knowledge areas, I really feel like this is something you can probably integrate with the rest of your resume. So you could put that into the work experience and university experiences. For example, in my resume, I said I had skills in HTML, CSS and JavaScript. But if you look above, I actually already mentioned that in one of my experiences. So I think if you don't have enough space in your resume, it's something that you can really leave out. I guess one advantage of this is that you can help recruiters quickly identify what skills you have. But other than that, I don't think it's something that is really necessary to put on the resume. So one more thing to flag before I wrap this video up is that my resume was for a non-technical role. So if you're applying for a technical role, I guess there'll be some differences in that you'll probably have to showcase your technical projects. So I guess that's just something to keep in mind. And that was the resume that got me into Amazon. But to be honest, people can fall into the trap that the resume is everything you need and you have to really perfect your resume, make sure that every single word is right. But there's so many components to getting an offer and the resume is only the very first step. There's so many other things you can do, such as building a network on LinkedIn, connecting with people, really figuring out what the company values, what the role entails. So I guess just make sure you spread your time out evenly. Spend a few hours on your resume, but really make sure that you don't dwell on it too much. So yeah, I hope you found this video insightful. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave it down in the comments below. Make sure you give this video a like and subscribe to this channel to stay updated. Bye for now.